Hey everyone, it's Mikey Mike Mike here and welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at a big update on my reef tank specifically before and after shots of all of the corals and how they've grown and progressed since adding them to the system and you will actually see whether or not it's worth or maybe possible to add in corals straight away and start up an instant reef tank or whether or not you should take it slowly as words of wisdom have been for the past couple of years. So that's something that you'll get to see towards the end of this video. But before we get started there, I'd just like to give you some updates on the channel. And my goodness, this channel has really grown into its own beast over the past couple of months. I wanna say thank you, of course, to the 3000 plus subscribers out there who have joined us. You've really made this channel just a really enjoyable thing for me to do. As you know, I'm just a regular hobbyist. I'm a guy who has a regular job, but at the end of the day, I come home and I film these videos for you, mainly because I'd really like to just educate and document the process of my reef tank for everyone out there, as well as some of the other aquarium related things as well. So let's talk about some of these exciting updates right here. So firstly, uh, in the future, what we're gonna be looking at is Aquaforest Components Pro. Now Aquaforest have finally reached out and offered to supply some products for the videos that I made. So. Thank you so much to the team at Aquaforest. You are really, really, really appreciated on this channel as well. So we're going to discuss whether or not it's worthwhile to switch from DIY alkalinity, calcium and magnesium to a premix product that also combines trace. And we're gonna weigh up some of the pros and cons of using that. On the note of trace elements as well, if you notice what these green bottles are, then you will realize that they are moonshine bottles. And of course, they are the Reef Moonshiners products. And as you can tell, I am a moonshiner. So we're gonna discuss in the future some of the trace elements that we dose into our aquarium and whether or not we can actually tweak those levels to get some really interesting or weird colors out of our SPS and LPS corals and whether or not it's actually worth using this system or not. Of course, I haven't really seen much information out there as to what some of these individual trace elements do. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a little bit of a deep dive into those specific components and let's find out whether or not the science or maybe the anecdotal discussions online can lead us in a direction of figuring out what these trace elements actually achieve in our tank. But believe me, I have seen a difference. All right, the third update is of course the team at Focustronic have sent in an Alcatronic unit. So I wanna say thank you to Eric for providing it for this channel, of course. This has been really high up on my wish list for so long. I mean, eight years ago when I started reefing, I could not have imagined automated alkalinity dosing. And so today to receive this unit and to really have it in my hands and use it on my system, Christmas has really come early. So thank you to the team at Focustronic. And what are we going to be doing with this? So I'm not gonna be providing you a setup video. I think they've done a really great job with that. Instead, we're going to discuss whether or not it's worth it, what the costs are of actually running a unit like this and some of the benefits of actually keeping a unit like this. Because for me, I really wanna see what this is like and I wanna see the difference it has on my life and my reef where I'm testing once every second day or once every day using my old test kits versus testing my aquarium six, seven times a day on the Alcatronic. So, those are the big updates on the channel. Of course, if you wanna know anything about these products, if you wanna know anything about what I should investigate with each one of these things, then please leave a comment below. That's really going to help me to steer the video in the direction that you want it to go. So please, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below and I'll be sure to answer them in these upcoming videos. Alrighty, so onto the second part of the video today. We are going to be discussing whether or not it's worthwhile setting up a reef tank instantly and throwing in corals, or whether or not you should take it easy. So you'll see in these upcoming shots, the beginning and the middle, the progress of my corals, as well as where the corals are now. I'll also share with you some of the bad stuff that's happened in my aquarium over the past couple of months, and hopefully you can learn from my journey. 
Alrighty, so without anything else to say, let's hop behind the camera and let's go. Right, so here we are behind the camera and what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the setup and progression of this aquarium and we're gonna take a look at some before and after shots of the corals, just so you can see what can be achieved in the space of six months. All right, so um, as you can tell, the aquascape has essentially filled itself out since adding corals. And I'll show you here a quick picture of what it used to look like. And my goal, of course, was to set up these three large pillars that would essentially become the foundation for SPS to grow out of and spread into this aquascape, like, like three sails of a ship. And so far, my vision since the beginning has really turned out to be something quite interesting and beautiful in its own way. So I'm really pleased with the way that it started off as a concept and how it ended up at the end. And I guess the most noticeable thing you'll see here are these forest fire digis and those have essentially just quadrupled in size since adding them and I think I added them in April and right now we are in September and so since that time um, I've actually fragged them quite often and, and given them away to people and so you'll notice that there will be some very fast corals in your system fast growing corals and of course some other corals that grow quite slowly as well all right, the other thing that I added into my system was this pathway of hammers here, and they have really, really gotten happy in this system. I haven't lost any hammers at all, and I think that's been really, really good. I think it comes down to the feeding that I'm adding into this aquarium, which is some of the liquid mysis and liquid artemia and the, the plankton mix, as well as, of course, dosing nitrates and phosphates into this system. So that's been good as well. I haven't lost any of these gold tip torches at all. So that's been a really big relief to me. I've um, noticed that in the past, some of these torches may be prone to brown jelly disease or some other illnesses. But in this particular system here, they've just been thriving and they've almost doubled in the head counts since adding them. So it's taken roughly around about six months for them to almost double their head count. And what they do is um, they don't necessarily shoot off a new head, but what happens is an existing head kind of grows bigger and bigger and then splits into two heads. So that's what I've noticed. And the same thing back here, if I move over to this side of the aquarium with these 24K gold torches as well. Um, these ones here are notorious for being really finicky. And um, in this system, they actually bleached in the beginning, but now they've really come back. And right now you can kind of see them. This one's a bit annoyed. Um, basically they like to close up at nighttime, but this one here came in as two heads and now it's almost separated into three or four heads. And each one of those heads is starting to separate as well. So we'll probably end up with around about 10 heads at the end of the day on that one. This particular one at the back here was just one, and now it's three, potentially moving on to four as well. All right, some other updates on the system. We've got the Scully Garden here, which is really sort of becoming its own nice little Scully patch. Uh, I noticed that at the beginning, Scullies did not like the par on my system, but over time they really did adjust to those levels and just constantly feeding them some pelletized food has been really good to keep their colors and their, their fluffiness during the day. Trackies as well in the background, as you can tell at the beginning, I had some problems with trackies and I actually lost a few of them um, simply because they just weren't ready for the system. But today they're really loving life where they are. All right, let's move on to some of the other notable growers in this system here. All right, first one here is the scrolling Monty. This red scrolling Monty has absolutely been a monster. Um, as with most Montipora, they do tend to grow very fast. And so this one here has doubled in size. Let's talk about the Millipora next to it. This particular Millie came in really dark around about four months ago. And since then it has almost quadrupled in size. So I'll throw up some pictures of those just so you can see. Um, another thing that's been quite interesting has been this anemone garden over here. I started off with two of those and now they've just split into nine or 10 
uh, pieces and so I'm actually getting quite worried of those in my aquarium because at some stage they will detach they will move and I have had them move before and so every time I see them move I try to just bring them back to this island but at some stage um, I will need to put them into their own aquarium Alrighty, what else do we need to talk about? Well, the SPS of course. Now, as you can tell, I have had some SPS losses in this system and that was due to the Vibrio strain of bacteria. So if anyone out there knows about bacteria, you'll know that Vibrio is a problem on these systems in Australia specifically to do with Tenius and Echinata. So I've lost one of my favorite blue Echinatas that used to be over here, as well as a Tenius that was here and another Tenius that was down over here. And that's just something that cannot be helped. Um, it's nature. I wish there was a way that we could figure this out, but unfortunately the research out there is still inconclusive as to what causes that particular coral strain to be more susceptible to that particular bacteria strain as well. Um, again, if you have any knowledge on that or if you know anything about that particular strain of bacteria, then please leave a comment below on your experience as well. As far as I can tell, it only affects wild collected Australian Tenius and Echinata. All right, some other losses to add to the mix. Well, um, I lost one of my favorite corals and that's the Cyanarena over here. That's the big red one. Um, unfortunately, there was a hammer stinger or a hammer tentacle that kind of got cut off as it was flowing through the water and probably just nicked itself on the rock and as it was flying around the aquarium it ended up in the mouth of the big red sign arena and essentially killed it all right some other updates at the back here so i've got at the back here a pc rainbow i'm not sure if you can see that there it's just sitting in the back there so that one there has been a really nice one in my system that actually bleached out and now it's come back in full colors and is loving life and so that's great so back to the conversation what's the deal with setting up an aquarium like this and should you set up an aquarium quickly or should you take it slowly well my advice is this i set up this aquarium in the space of six months and I added in a ton of coral at the beginning, but I didn't add them all at once. I added in zoas first. After around about two to three weeks, I added in torches and hammers. And then after around about two months, I started to add in some of the easier to keep SPS. And so it may seem like this was an instant transformation, but roughly, two months or I guess eight weeks went by before all of these corals were really in this system. And then after that, I added piece by piece all of these extra SPS on the side. Now, why should you go quickly? Well, one of the reasons for going quickly is you add in all of the beneficial bacteria that all of these corals contain. But why should you go slowly as well? Well, actually these corals, they can live quite well in new water when you add in nutrients, when you add in bacteria, when you add in food and you keep that water clean. Unfortunately, aquarists, people who keep these aquariums, aren't able to keep up with some of the fluctuations of alkalinity and calcium and magnesium that happen in the beginning. And so that's the biggest folly, is that going too fast and not testing and responding to the needs of the system quickly enough is going to result in some problems. In the beginning, you'll notice that your nutrient levels will, will rise very quickly or they'll drop and tank very quickly as well. You'll notice that your alkalinity may rise very quickly or fall very quickly depending upon things like coralline algae or if you're running a refugium with algae in there or if your corals just decide for that day to metabolize more nutrients and grow and have a spurt. So you'll notice that in the beginning the system and its stability is actually very very unstable and it goes up and down. So my advice is this, take it easy in the beginning 
And then once you've established the patterns and the rhythms of your choreo, then you can go berserk and add as much corals as you like. If there is anything that you want to add in the beginning very quickly, my advice is add in corals that are more likely going to survive some of the swings, specifically the nutrient swings and the alkalinity swings. So add in big rocks full of zoas or any of the, the LPS out there that you know you can provide nutrients for and that aren't going to simply RTN or strip away as soon as you have an ALK swing. So if there is anything you'd like to do, then my advice is to take it easy in the beginning and then once you've gotten the stability, ramp up your coral capacity. Alrighty everyone, so that's the discussion on how far this reef tank has come. Uh, as you can tell, things have changed, but at the same time, some of these corals are still just finding their groove. They're obviously sending out little growth uh, coralites, but at the same time, um, you're not always going to see all corals grow crazy. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time for these corals, especially wild collected ones, to get used to your system. So if you're setting up a reef tank and you're wondering, why aren't my corals growing super, super fast? Then just believe me, some corals like to take their time. Others really, really love to grow like crazy. And I guess that's nature. There is so much diversity and so much mystery in this hobby. And so we're just here to figure out one video at a time. All right, everyone, if you've enjoyed this video, I wanna say thank you for sticking around and I will see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one, everyone, and cheers. See ya, everyone.